What's up guys, it's Jeff Ray, featured guest host here at Weld.com. And on today's episode, we're gonna be showing you how to weld on a fuel cell. So, let's get at it. The customer wants to repurpose this tank and put it back in the hole of their boat. But first, we're gonna remove all the oxidation so this thing is clean. But we gotta remember, this had fuel in it at one point. So we gotta take into consideration when welding on it that the fuel vapors are not in there. Before we get to welding on the fuel cell here, we're gonna get the surface material prep. I'm gonna go ahead and clean off this coating that they got here with the 3M paint stripper wheel. I prefer this over a flap disc or a hard disc, especially on the aluminum because that will actually embed impurities into the base metal, which I don't want. So I like to use this wheel. I've got some of the spots already knocked down with this. I got a spot here I still gotta do. And then we're gonna take it to the rotary file or a burr bit and get the oxidation actually ground out of there. So. We got these spots cleaned down now with the paint stripper wheel. I'm gonna throw the burr bit in here. This is a high speed drill. I don't have an air tank with the capacity to keep up with my die grinder. So I'm just gonna chuck it in here and we'll get the oxidation ground out of here. So what we're trying to accomplish here is removing all the oxidation out of here with the burr bit. You can see all the white oxidation in the material there. We're gonna grind that out. But once you start to grind it, it may look like it's all out of there, but I'm gonna show you the difference once I start grinding on it, what that actually looks like. Because you can distinctly see a difference between the, the white gray in the material of the aluminum and then the shiny gray of the good base material in the aluminum. So once you start grinding it down, you'll start to see that. So we're gonna grind into this one a little bit more. It's pretty pitted there, so it's gonna need quite a bit more than this little one here. So you can see here how silver this spot is, and then you can see the gray in this spot. That still has the oxidation in there. You can see when it really cleans up, you can tell the difference that all that oxidation is out of there. This is gonna really make the weld pool really clean. If you don't get all that oxidation out of there, you'll see it clear as day in that puddle there. Yeah, you just have to push the wire in there. It'll push it out, hopefully bring it to the surface, but we're gonna get it all ground out as much as possible. Make for a cleaner, better weld. You can see here, this dust is real white. That's the oxidation until I start seeing that silver aluminum base material coming out of there. I know there's still oxidation in there. Like I said, it could be a little deceitful after you grind the surface off, but it can still penetrate down in there. So you gotta make sure you get all of that out. We got this all prepped now. Now we're ready for the next step, the welding process. Before we go just welding on the fuel cell here, we need to ensure there's no residual fuel or fuel vapors inside the tank. This tank has been out of the boat for a number of weeks now already, and we've already taken a hose and flushed this thing out to ensure that there's no fuel left in the tank. From what I smell, I don't smell any fuel. It just smells like water in there, but to be safe, we're going to add some water in here and put some dry ice in here. What this is gonna do is create a chemical reaction that creates CO2 gases, carbon dioxide. And what that's gonna do is fill the inside of the tank with the CO2 rather than oxygen. For combustion, you'll need three things. You need a fuel source, ignition source, and oxygen. By removing the fuel and the oxygen out of here, it leaves no possibility for combustion. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some water in here, we're gonna break up some dry ice, which as well is more cost effective than buying gases and trying to fill this. It cost me about 15 bucks for the 10 pound block of dry ice, and that's why we use this and give it a few minutes, make sure there's no oxygen left in here. We're gonna go ahead, get that going, then we'll be ready to weld. So, let's get at it. 
Now, time for the dry ice. So we have our dry ice here. First thing I wanna note is gloves. Always take safety precaution when handling dry ice. This stuff is super cold and will give you a freeze burn. Always wear gloves, safety glasses, as well as this stuff can cause suffocation because it is a gas that we're releasing. We have both garage doors open, so that allows any gases to escape out of the building so we don't have to worry about suffocation in this building here. It's well ventilated. So that noise that you hear is actually the dry ice melting just from the warmth of this surface here. It's not even that it's hot, it's ambient. It's about 80 degrees outside. But that's how cold this stuff is. Even with the gloves on, I can really tell I have to be careful. You can see it's getting pretty cold there already. You can see the gases in here are filled up to about here because this is the only hole or vent point in this. So from here up, it has actually got oxygen in it. So what I'm gonna do is lay it on the bottom and let some of the oxygen push out of here. Essentially, we're purging this thing out, just like we would be doing on a piece of stainless steel tubing. We're gonna flip it on its back, give it a few minutes, then we'll flip it back over so I can weld the bottom side. As you can see, now that I got it laid flat on its back, it's able to purge out the rest of that oxygen. You can actually see some of the carbon dioxide vapors coming out of there. We'll give this a few minutes and then we'll get set up, make some welds. So now we're ready to make a weld. We're ready to fix our fuel cell. We took all the proper precautionary measures to ensure that we don't have combustion here with the fuel, fuel vapors, and uh, we got our material prep. I'm utilizing the Everlast PowerTig 210 EXT. We're gonna be running AC. I've got the machine set at 135 amps with about a three second post flow on there. And we're utilizing the foot pedal. E3 332 tungsten. I got a straight collet on here with some 4043 332nd filler wire. We're just gonna go through here and start filling up everywhere I ground out all that oxidation and then uh, yeah, get this thing sent over, get it recoded. They can put this thing back in the hole of their boat. It's welding great so far. Not too trashy at all. See a little distortion there, but it's no big deal. One thing I want to note, just be sure to watch out for your fish eyes. This is a tank. We don't want it to leak fuel after. They are going to have this thing pressure tested and checked once over, twice over before they put it down in the hole because this thing will get glassed into the hole there. So we want to ensure there's no leaks. So just be cautious. Now we're almost done. Throw another piece of wire at it here. Should have this spot complete. Weld turned out pretty clean. Like I said, material prep is everything. And as you can see, we're still here. 
this thing didn't explode on us, so we took the right precautionary measures when working on a fuel cell and evacuating any oxygen or fuel vapors left in the cell so we don't have combustion and go boom. I've used this method a couple of times before. It's worked great for me, so hope it'll work great for you guys too. Let us know in the comments down below of some of your experiences, maybe fixing fuel cells or building fuel cells and some precautionary measures you may take as well. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.